Three-year-old Ashley Bajiga was playing with her brother when she fell and scraped her knee. Her parents cleaned her up and didn't think any more of it. But two weeks later, Ashley was in a trauma shock unit hospital bed, fighting for her life, an infection seething through her body. That was only the beginning of the family's ordeal. She got arthritis and they had to operate on her. Then we struggled to get medicines in an artificial respirator. Still today, we are fighting to get the medicine. Venezuela, already reeling from a food and supply shortage, is now also facing a public health crisis. One in three people admitted to public hospitals last year died. The number of operational hospital beds has fallen by 40 percent since 2014, and there is a critical shortage of medicine. We can't get Ashley's medicine in pharmacies, and that hurts her. Sometimes there is medicine for her, and sometimes there isn't. So the one day they don't give her treatment is the day her condition gets worse. For everything, there are long lines winding through the streets of Caracas. Here, Ashley's mother waits to try to make doctor's appointments for her sick daughter. Inside the hospitals, the situation isn't any less grim. Crumbling infrastructure, damaged facilities, and often unsanitary conditions. Don't be a pig, reads this reminder to wash hands in a decaying hospital bathroom with broken sinks. As families struggle for treatment and proper care, the nurses and doctors themselves are under immense pressure and stress. Ashley's pediatrician has had a gun and knife drawn on him on different occasions, all while on the job. He watched five children die from sepsis within a week. Yet he knows he can't give up. Patients like Ashley are depending on him. In order to eradicate the infection, Ashley should have continuously received vancomycin, an antibiotic. But she couldn't get it because no one had the drug. That led to a whole ordeal for the parents to try to get the drug through other hospitals. The operation itself was anything but smooth. Bacteria from Ashley's leg had reached her right lung, causing it to collapse. And it led to an infection, permanently scarring her heart. In the end, Ashley received her medication from another patient who had died. Finally, two months after she was first admitted, Ashley is able to go home. She kisses a nurse on her way out, mounts her father's motorcycle, and waves goodbye. One journey back to health despite a country in crisis. Noreen Nasser, Associated Press.